Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Let's look at verse number 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse number 1 says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Amen? We're talking from the subject matter of respecting God's timing. We, we found out that, look, God has a timetable for all of us. Amen? And I, I want you to get the revelation that, that God wants to do supernatural things in our lives, but it's at his time. Go to Isaiah 55. Amen? Isaiah 55. Because we found out in previous lessons that just like the thoughts of God are not like our thoughts and the ways of God are not like our ways, neither is God's timing like our timing. Amen. I personally have have uh, I tell you. I was uh, several months ago as I was believing God for the next move that he wanted to do in the ministry. You know. I, I believe that there is, there is, and I'm going to talk about this later on, that there is a preparation time. Yeah. Amen. Before the timing of God happens in each and every one of our lives, we have to be prepared for the move of God. Yeah. Amen. And so I'm always a planner. And so I always plan for things. Amen. And give God an opportunity to work out through the plan. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 55 verse 8 says, Isaiah 55 Look what it says, Isaiah 55. Let me get there. Verse number eight. He says this, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. I just took the principle of saying, look, just like the, our ways are not like God's ways, our thoughts are not like God's thoughts, neither is our timing like God's timing. Amen. And many times people, I see people move before God tells them to move. And, and, and particularly, I, 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 I talk to many pastors, and, uh, and, and they move in ministry before it's time. Now, I was, I was there, and I understand the, the press to want to do more for the kingdom of God. But if you don't do it in God's timing, amen, it's going to be pressure on you. See, see once, once you move in God's timing, look, it's all on God and not on you. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. And so, so we found out, amen, that uh, last week we found out that there were different scopes of time. We found out that there was eternity. That's the place where God resides, amen. Go to uh, 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter number 3. See, because, watch this now, God is not bound by, by time. He functions in one eternal now. Amen. See, see watch, watch, watch what this says. 2 Peter Chapter three, second Peter, chapter number three, look at verse number eight, second Peter, chapter three, verse number eight, it says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. God doesn't operate in our time. Amen. Because one day for us is like a thousand years to God and a thousand years is like a day. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So God operates in an eternal now. He's been here. Every, look, he says, I'm Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. Amen. amen. Then we found out that there was not only eternity, but there was time. Amen. And that was specific periods carved out in eternity, marked by years, months, days, hours, minutes, seconds. Amen. Then we found out that was dispensations. I gave you eight dispensations on last week. Amen. And then we found out that there are seasons. Go to Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29, amen? Now, when I talk about seasons, I'm not talking about winter, summer, fall, and spring. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about those seasons. I'm talking about periods of time where you rightfully receive what belongs to you. Amen. Because God has a plan for your life. Hallelujah, amen. Jeremiah 29, Jeremiah 29. Look at verse number 11. Jeremiah 29, verse number 11. Look what he says. For I know the thoughts that I have toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. God says, I, look, I know the plans I have for you. Amen. Hallelujah. I know the seasons I have for you. Amen. And we found out on last week that, that God sometimes initiates those seasons. We found out and we gave a great illustration how, how God asked Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Amen. God initiated that season for Job. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, 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 praise the Lord. Then we found out that that was the timing of God. Somebody say timing. Now, now we found out 
in timing, that if I move in God's timing, then everything he has placed to ensure my success will be there if I move in his timing. And we found out that God will arrange circumstances, situations, and favor on my behalf just so that I can be successful in life if I move in his timing. And that's why it's so important that we don't miss the timing of God. Hallelujah. Now, now, go over to, uh, go over to uh, Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Because tonight I want to talk to you about how we can create our seasons. Because there are some seasons that we can initiate. Okay? There are some seasons that we can initiate. So how can I initiate the supernatural, Pastor? How, how can I know that God has given me a green light? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter number 13. Verse number nine, Matthew 13, verse number nine. You ready? Look what he says. Who had, who had ears to hear, do what? Let him hear. Now, here's how we can initiate the seasons in our own lives, okay? It's through prayer. Somebody say prayer. For us to live a supernatural life, amen, we must understand and discern and discover when God says there's a green light, and I'm telling you that, that you get those green lights in your prayer time. See, see, when you spend some intimate time with God, amen, you'll be able to hear his voice more clearly. That's what the Bible says. He that hath ear, let him hear. Now, he's not talking about these physical things on your, on your side of your head. God is talking about the ear of your spirit. See, if you learn how to be sensitive to the things of God, watch this now. You'll be able to discern when the time God moves. Amen. Amen. But you got to be able to hear. And many people don't hear because they're not intimate with God. The Bible says that, look, my sheep know my voice and the stranger they will not follow. But watch this now. If you're not sure if it's God or if it's you, how can you move when God say move? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, now watch this now. See, we, we've been praying, we prayed last month for, for those 20 days. We prayed for wisdom, for watchfulness, for wholeness, for workers, and for wealth for those three people. Now, because we did that, we have an expectation for God to give us the double back in our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. See, see I, I was trying to get you to sharpen your ear to hear God. Every, everything is on purpose. Somebody say on purpose. See, I'm not just teaching things just to be teaching them. I'm teaching because there is a purpose. See, because I wanted you to be able to hear what God had to say about prayer because prayer is so important for you to get to your next season. Amen. Amen, amen. Whoo, Jesus. God, how do I get this green light? Amen. Amen. Now, go to Jeremiah 33. Jeremiah 33. Jeremiah chapter 33. See, many people believe that because God is sovereign, that God will violate his own word to move in your life. And he's not going to do that. Amen? God honors his word. And he needs your participation and your permission to get involved in your situation. And it comes through the avenue of prayer. Amen? You, when you ask God to get involved in your situation, God said, okay, now you have invited me in. Now I can move on your behalf. Amen. But, but watch this now. If you don't say, God, I, I'm coming to you just to spend time with you, you'll sit there and blame God for everything that not, that's not going on in your own life. Jeremiah 33. Look at verse number three. Jeremiah 33, verse number three. Hallelujah. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. Jeremiah 33 says, call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. So, so God says, listen, I'll show you your path. I'll show you your way. I'll show you the right timing if you call on me. The Amplified says, call on to me, and I will, I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things fenced in and hidden which you do not know. You do not distinguish and recognize, have knowledge of, and understand. So God said, if you just call on me, you know, I'll answer you, and then I'm going to show you some things. I'm going to show you the right time to move. Ooh, praise God. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Now, go to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Amen. Luke chapter 18. Look at verse number one. Luke chapter 18. Verse number one. Luke 18, verse number one. You ready? And he spake a parable unto them to this end. That men ought to what? Always pray and not faint. Okay, so so if, if God says that we should always pray, okay, and prayer is the avenue that I invite God into my situation, and then God says, I will give you directions for your life, and I will show you the right time, so you ought to always pray. Amen. And so many people depend on somebody else for, for their prayer life. Pastor, would you pray for me? I will pray for you. I, I'm going to pray for you. But but wouldn't it be great if... if, if you see your prayer work? And look, look, over, look, I, I am so excited to hear the testimonies of the people. Y- y'all been coming to me telling me about the three people that you prayed for and what's been happening in, in their lives as a result of you praying. See, that's what the devil don't want you to know, that God's going to answer your prayer. See, because look, when you build up your confidence in God, that God heard you and now you can hear back from God. Oh, look, you want to do that. Amen, amen. Amen. Now, now here's how here's how you know that it's the it's the move of God in your situation through prayer. Watch this now. When you get the peace of God. Well, Pastor, how do you know that God said it was time? Because I got peace on it. Go to Colossians chapter three. Man, I'm telling you. When your spirit has peace about it. Okay. And God says, this is the time. You know that's the time. Okay, Colossians chapter 3. Watch this, watch this. Colossians chapter number 3. Look at verse number 15. Colossians chapter number 3, verse number 15. You ready? Look what it says. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. The Amplified talks about let the peace of God act like an umpire. Call balls and strikes. Amen. And that peace, look, look, when you know that God said something, you, when you know that it's the right time, amen, there's a peace about you. Hallelujah. When we, when we uh, Sister Beverly, when we came over here to this facility, initially I didn't like it. <laughs> I ain't going to lie to y'all. I, I, I looked at all the work that we had to do. I'm like, oh, no, no. And then, 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 then God said, this is the place. And God's peace just came over me like, whew. and I knew it was the time of God. I, I knew it was, this was the move that God wanted us to make. I knew that because that peace came on me. Amen. And that's what I'm telling you. When you pray and God start talking to you about the move, then that peace is going to come over you. And you're going to say, yep, this is the one. Oh, my goodness. Amen. 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 That's, that's how you know that it's God. When that peace come on you. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, watch this now. Go to, go to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Look at verse number 7. Philippians chapter 4. Pastor, how do I know that it's my season? It's the season to move. Well, I find out through my prayer life. Amen. And give God an opportunity to speak to me. And once God speaks to me, he's going to cause that peace to come on me. Amen. Verse number 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So, so watch this now. So the, that peace that God gives us, watch this now, is going to pass all understanding. Amen? And it's going to keep my heart and my mind. Now, can, can, I, can, can I see a situation where somebody prayed and asked God for the, for the right timing and they had peace about it? Yeah, you know I can. Hey, go to 1 Samuel. <laughs> Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter number 30. Because David was facing a traumatic situation. Amen. His family was taken in battle. And all the men wanted to kill him. Amen. And, 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 and he goes before God in prayer and asks God, shall I pursue? Yeah. Amen. Look at verse number eight, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse number eight. Look what he says. 
And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Man, he heard God speak and say, now that, This is the right time to go get that stuff back. Go get your family back right now, David. Go get everything you lost right now. Why? Because you got, now he got this peace about it. Yeah, I can move now. I'm telling you, when it's time for you to move and you respect God's timing, you're going to have that peace about you. You're going to know, look, look, when it's time for you to move to another job and you've been praying and you've been praying and praying and that other job pop up and you get that peace, you're going to say, yep, that's, that's the one. That, that's the one right there. Especially when you have options, bro, Pew. Whether I take this one or I take that one. And this one, you don't have any peace about it. You're like, ah, I don't, I just, I, I, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. But this other one come up, you're like, oh, oh, yeah, this is the one right here. It's almost like finding the right church. You go from church to church trying to find a church, and you, and you say, oh, no, this, this don't fit right. This, this, this just don't fit right. And then you come here to Faith Christian Center Church, and you say, oh, oh, yeah, I got peace about this one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Jehoshaphat. When we read 2 Chronicles chapter 20, normally we start around verse number 15. Well, really, if you go back to, chapter, to verse number 3 in 2 Chronicles chapter, chapter 20, you'll see that Jehoshaphat went, in, went to God in prayer to find out, God, what's the next move? You know, he was facing all these enemies that were coming at him. And now he goes to God in prayer and say, God, what should I do? And then God gets to verse 15 and says, the battle is not yours. It belongs to me. Then God gives him say, now, now, here's the time you move. I want you to gather up everybody and I want you to go now. But before you go, I need you to put the praises in front. And y'all know what happened. That God set ambushments against the enemies of, of, of Jehoshaphat. And they all killed themselves, amen. And he walked away with all the spoils. But he started in prayer. See, why, 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 don't, we, why don't we start in prayer first? Why, why are we always jumping, and then after we done jump, then we want to pray? When we should pray first and ask God, is this the right move? Amen. And then when God says it's time, then we jump. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So there are seasons of prayer. Don't discount prayer. Amen. Because prayer will give you, watch this now, give you the right timing in God, on God's terms. Amen. All right? Secondly, there, there are seasons of preparation. Somebody say seasons of preparation. Amen. Now, now here's the thing. Things don't just happen. They got to be planned. All right? I, Jacob, I see people. <laughs> they say, I want to get married. But they made, they made no plans to get married. A man wants to get married, but he don't have a job. He made no plans. The Bible says, who goes to war and sit and not down first and count the cost to see whether or not he have enough to, to maintain? Who builds the house? And then he says, who goes to war and don't, and don't survey and see how many men he's going to need to fight against some, another battle in the, in the battle? Amen. See, there has to be a plan. Amen. You just can't just jump up and say, I want to get married and, and, and don't have a plan. Glory to God. Amen. You got to be prepared. Now, as, as I said earlier, uh, I'm a planner. And, and so I like to give God something to work with. If God doesn't give me a specific plan, look, I'm going to do my due diligence and, God, and, work, and, and prepare as if God, look, I, I'm just, I'm just going to wait on you to, to make it happen. See, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not waiting for the 10,000 to show up before I start planning for y'all to come. Oh, no, 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 I ain't, no, no, I ain't sitting back and wait. We just going to wait till all, all the people show up. No, I'm already planning. We put systems in place, so we ready, look, we ready to handle the 10,000. Why? Because, look, there has to be some preparation. My pastor used to tell me, he say, he say, son, preparation become comes before opportunity if you're not prepared and the opportunity comes you're gonna miss it you got to prepare yourself so look there are seasons of preparation in order for you to hear God's timing 
If you're not prepared for when God says to move, guess what? What's going to happen? You're going to miss him. And he's not obligated to repeat himself because you weren't prepared for it. <laughs> Amen. And preparation, watch this now. Preparation is the deliberate actions to arrive at a certain place and you're ready for it. Somebody say ready for it. Amen. But now watch this now. Preparation is going to require that you do some change. Somebody say change. Oh, 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 oh. oh see, some people don't want to change this, Pauline. God, I'm waiting on your timing. But while you're waiting, God say, okay, there's some preparation that's going on, but there's some things that you might need to change. Amen? Amen. There's some things that you might have to have a, a conscious interrupt. <laughs> Amen? To change your behavior. Amen? In the preparation time. See, that, that, that could be a, a conscious interrupt that I need to have. Amen. And watch this now. It is not God's responsibility for you to be prepared. It's your responsibility. See, life is choice driven. You're going to live and die by the choices you make. Amen. And when it comes down to you preparing for the things of God, you got to know that, look, I got to make this decision. Ooh, praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. Watch it now. Preparation is going to require, somebody say, discipline. Ah. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Amen. It's going to require discipline. See, discipline re requires that you control this flesh. Amen. Amen. See, if you want to operate in God's timing, you got to learn how to control this flesh of yours. <laughs> Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Look at verse number 24. I'm talking about respecting God's timing. Amen. And there are seasons, watch this now, of prayer, and then there are seasons of preparation. Okay. But in the preparation process, there must be some discipline taking place. Look at verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in the race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate, have self-control in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. If therefore I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Watch this now. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Now, let me, let me, let me just take a little, side, a little side trail here. Verse 27. But I keep under my. So I and my body are two different things. See, many times we think that this is who we are. That's not, this flesh and blood is not who you are. See, the I is the spirit man that lives on the inside of this body. So you should have control over this flesh, over this body. Amen? But you got to discipline yourself. Somebody say discipline. Oh, my goodness. Not only that, but watch this now. But then there also is required some repetitious information that, because that's how learning takes place. Amen? You got to hear some things over and over and over again in the preparation stage. Amen? In order for you to get to the right timing of God. Amen? So there are seasons of prayer, there are seasons of preparation, and there, then there are seasons of patience. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Amen. Back in, uh, back in, I think it was back in May, uh, you know, okay, I never told y'all where the, the facility that we were looking at before. Y'all remember that? I, was, I, I told y'all I was looking at a facility. And I never told y'all what it where it was, right? Well, well, on uh, on Old Dishman Road, that was the the YMCA that they were building. Okay, it sat up for seven years. Okay, and uh, they they were ninety percent complete with the building process, and they ran out of money. So I, you know, I'm scouting out places to to go find a new location. 
Now, now the Y sat on 17 acres of land. So I was really excited about the land. The building, I could, I, I, could, I could deal with the building, but hey, if I don't get, look, the land is what I really wanted. And so, so, so I, I started preparing myself. So, so, so in the preparation, watch this now, I contacted, well, I contacted the bank because the bank repossessed the building and the land. Uh, I did my due diligence. I, I called around, talked to some people, found out, hey, look, what's going on with it? All right? And so, so, so then, then uh, I walked around and went in there and seen what the condition was. I'm like, okay, God, I, I can work with this. I can, I, I can work with this, you know? Well, I can move this wall and put this here. And look, we can convert this into the sanctuary. Look, I'm preparing. I, look, I, look, I got the, I even called the architect, the man who designed the building. I said, hey, listen, uh, uh, can I talk to you? And he, I said, I need, I need a, 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 some plans of the building. And you know, the man gave me a whole set of plans. And so I'm sitting at my desk, just walking through the building in, in, my, in, in the corridors of my mind, trying to figure out, okay, this is what we can do here and there. And so, uh, so then, in the preparation part of it, I, I contacted the owner, which was the bank that repossessed it. Okay, and I said, okay, well, he, let me make an offer to you. He said, well, we, we're having some legal trouble right now with the person that gave the land to the YMCA. I said, okay. I said, well, who is that? They gave me the name. I called him. I, 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 had, I met him out there. I said, hey, meet me at the, at the place. I got out there. I began to share with him the vision. And, uh, and then he asked, he said, well, he said, tell me a little bit about yourself. So I told him a little bit about myself, and I told him how God told me to, to leave Exxon Mobile. He said, oh, I couldn't have done that. I said, okay, well, good. Look, you, look I'm moving by faith. And so, so watch this now. He told me no. I, I made an offer on the building. I made, a, I made a good offer, too. But he told me, he said, nope, it's not enough. Somebody else made a high offer. Did I hear God? Wait. Now, I'm disappointed, y'all. No, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm, truly, I'm truly disappointed, you know, because I done done my preparation, God. Look I, I, look, I think this is the next move that God wants us to do, amen? And I hear God say, just wait, just, just wait. Just wait. I'm like, no, God, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to get out this theater. I'm, I'm ready to get from behind this shop. Says, God, I'm, re I'm ready. He says, not time. It's not time. And so, you know, I got the letter from the man, and I, I still have it on my desk. And so I, I'm, I'm disappointed. And that was in May. Yeah, around May. So I said, God, I give up. I'm going to just wait on you. Whatever you say we're going to do, we're going to do it. I'm through. I'm, look, I've done my preparation. I've done what I was supposed to do. I, look, I presented it to you. You told me no. Move on. I said, I'm going to wait for you. That was in May. In July, I got a phone call. I ain't going to tell y'all all of it. I'll just tell y'all just some of it. <laughs> we just say, oh. I got a call in July. And uh, the phone call was a great opportunity. And it was a God timing thing. And I'm like, yeah. 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 Now, I'm seeing the hand of God moving. Because if we move in his time, amen, and we get in his flow, it's going to be easy for us. Okay? And so now, now, I'm just waiting on just one word now. I'm waiting on one word. And I believe, I, I, I truly believe that <laughs> in the coming days, in the coming days. The transition is going to be so easy because the peace of God. And man, when y'all see what God going to do. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And y'all going to be, y'all going to be looking like, how did that happen? 
It all happened, watch this now, because I was willing to wait on God. See, that was time, I'm telling you, because I, I, I'm teaching this because I've been there. I've been, I, I, I've tried to move ahead of God. And when I tried to move ahead of God, it was a struggle. I didn't have peace about it. Amen. I, I never could get the peace. And God said, if you just wait, just wait patiently. Don't, don't just, look, wait on me. Amen. And, and, and watch what I can do in my timing, not your timing. And see, God said, I'm going to orchestrate circumstances and situations that's going to cause you to be in the blessed state. But you got to be willing to wait. And so many of you right now, you want to move and you want to do this and you want to do that. And God said, oh, just slow down. Slow your roll. Wait. Wait. Amen. Just wait. Just wait. And if you wait, okay, so many, so many women have gotten themselves in trouble because they determined that their biological clock was ticking too high. Tick, 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 tick. And they pick somebody that's not from God. And then down the line, they come back and say, well, pastor, no, 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 pastor told you, pastor told you that that one wasn't the one. Oh, Jesus, go to Psalms 27, Psalm 27. Let me, get, let me hurry up here. Amen. Psalm 27. <clears throat> Psalms 27. Psalms 27. Man, when we learn how to wait on God. Amen. And, and do do things in his timing, not your own timing. Amen. Amen. I, Sister Porter, I remember I, I, was, I was trying to pastor too soon. I thought I was ready. And God showed me. He said, son, if I give you any one of those churches, you're going to be fighting all the days of your life. And you're not going to have peace. Amen. And what I want to do for you is going to cause you to have peace. No strain, no struggle. Amen. And I'm going to prosper you where I, I want you to be. But if you get ahead of me. Amen. Because without a transformation of thinking, them folk going to fight you. Because they believe it's their church and not my church. Oh, Jesus. Jesus said, look, I will build my church. Amen. And the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. The reason why so many churches are, are having challenges right now, because it ain't his church. See, the deacon say, we run this. And God said, hold up. I thought I was in control. And when I was trying to move, I was trying to move, you know, and God said, no, 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 you're going to mess up. You're going to miss it right now. He said, just wait on me. Just wait on me. I said, okay, Lord. Yeah. Verse number 14. Psalms 27, verse 14. What it says. Wait on the Lord and what? Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on. That's for somebody in the house. You're trying to move too fast. God said, wait. He said, but while you're waiting, be of good courage. <laughs> and watch it now. He said, then I will strengthen your heart. Amen. I will give you the ability to be able to stand while you're waiting. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and see, see, many times, because God sees you not prepared. Amen. That season of waiting is a season of development. Amen. I, I, I never could understand. Now, how, 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 how long have you been going to Haiti? Since when? 2009. We've been supporting Sister Porter down in Haiti since 2009. Now, watch this now. I never would understand why God didn't allow me to go when I could have went, amen, until this, this past season. And so I'm sitting there waiting on God to tell me when to go. And God say, okay, now is the time to go because I need you to see some things. 
Amen. It was a fact-finding mission. Yeah, we done, done some ministry, done some baptizing, but it was really a fact-finding mission. But it was in the timing of God. I wouldn't have been able to see what I saw if I would have went before time. Amen. And all I'm trying to tell you is there are times where God just wants you to wait. Amen. God, knows, look, you could be driving down the road and you hear the voice of God. And God say, stop right here. Stop right. Stop right there. Stop and wait. And the, Lord, the light is green. There's no stop sign. But God say, wait. Because he knows that there's some fool that's going to come down that other street. Amen. That's not going to observe the light or the, or the sign. And by, by being able to hear the voice of God, watch this now, and know his timing could save your life. Amen. Okay, but next week I'll, next week I'll, I'll continue to talk about these seasons, amen. To, to how, do I, how do I know that it's God's timing, amen. One, I, I know it through prayer, okay. Secondly, I know it because I, I prepared for it. I know it because I'm waiting on God, amen. Now, there, there's some more I want to give you about this being patient because patience is, man, patience is a virtue. <laughs> Jesus. Amen. For, no, and and, and I, let's be honest, there are times where you want to rush God. Come on, God, come on, come on. Yeah, you, you, yeah what you say, Sister you take it too long, God. Take it too long. Come on now, hurry up. And, and, and God, just, God just lovingly just say, my child, just wait. <laughs> I got your best interest in mind. Amen. I look, look, I, look, I know what I'm doing. I always say, look, God is good at being God. Amen. He don't need no help. Praise God. Amen. But I got to stop tonight because I am out of time. Give God a big hand of praise. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen.